To follow up on the video from Tuesday here, I thought I would talk about where we want to be bullish because a lot of times we have the habit of talking about the markets, right? And usually what we mean is the S&P or just equities in general, but we have treasury markets, currency markets, energies, metals, indices, of course, so many different corners of the market. The more specific we can be when equities or whatever we're looking at are in chop, which is exactly what most of the indices are in, the better off we're going to be remembering that we want to find symbols that are relative outperformers. Outperformers, in this case, I'm bullish. This is a follow-up on my bullish outlook video. Relative is, well, how are they related? Relative to what? For me, it's relative to their involvement, their inclusion in a sector ETF or an index. When I look at the Dow, I can look at the Dow for what it is. Let's go through the checklist, if we will, uh, together. I want to start with structure, right? Structure dictates strategy. Strategy dictates indicators and levels. Okay, so the structure is neutral, yellow. That means we're dealing with a chop, which you can see we're kind of going back and forth within this Darvis. Every time we get near the support of the Darvis, we want to think about buys. Indicator, well, that's the 200 exponential propulsion. It's the combination of an 8 and 200 exponential moving average cross. That would be another level to look at for an entry long. The stochastic being oversold near the low would be a great confirmation. Uh, different price patterns like minor lows or inside candles would be other fantastic confirmations of a shift from a move lower to move higher. The last time we were down here, beautiful minor low pattern, and you can see also the signal right in there. There's a lot that we can look at to stack reasons, but if I'm looking at all the indices equally, I'm never going to be able to discern that the Dow is a better candidate for a buy than the NAS. And, you know, we can keep doing this away from the indices. Let's take a look at silver. I get a lot of questions about silver. And silver has been in a very strong uptrend, you know, and the key word is has been. Most recently, silver started to transition to a little bit more of a neutral environment. I still want to be a buyer. But back in this area, I'm a trend follower. Now we're dealing with chop. Back in this area, I'm looking for reversions to the mean, right? I'm looking for mean reversions. Now I'm looking for oversold buys. Structure dictates strategy. So now, where is there an oversold buy? Well, I'd love to see the slow stochastic retest this midpoint, this 50 level, right? I would love to see that. We have a Darvis level in here. That would be, again, another level. We've seen this before. Another minor low pattern would be fantastic to be able to take advantage of. Okay, there's a lot to like here. This is where most traders stop. They look at a symbol because they want to trade it, and they say to themselves, oh, let's just trade this. But how about asking, why do I want to trade silver? Why not? And I know it's not near a level quite yet for a reversion to the wave. That's my, that's my view of the, of the mean. This is still in an uptrend. So gold is a better quality uptrend. Take a look at every time we test the daily price movement range. They have consistently been, especially within the context of this uptrend, it's consistently been a really solid place to buy, even though we haven't quite touched the 200 propulsion or the 34 EMA wave. So this is an alternative and aggressive aggro, as I like to say, it's an aggro way to look at gold. But the bigger picture here is we should always be thinking something versus something else. And that's how we get the relative performance. Uh, part of our watch list really dialed in. So here's two examples of symbols that I'm looking at. I'd rather be long Dow than the NASDAQ or the S&P, and I'd rather be long gold than silver. They're all buyable in their own way, but we ask ourselves what would have the best chance for follow through, and this is how I do it. I hope that makes sense, and it's all rooted in understanding structure first, right? Structure. Then we get into the different tools 
that would help us identify where a pullback could be viable, right? So these are the typical tools of my tops. And, and this is something that I know a lot of you see me use in the rooms and the free version of many of these tools are available in the room drives, in the futures room, the options room, the sector secrets mastery room. So if you've never checked them out and you're a member, go grab them. I make those layouts available free for members. And by the way, if you're on TradingView, we have made those indicators available for free for many years. Uh, the grab, the wave, propulsion, there's a number of these that are already there, the Darvis 2.0. So check them out. I really want to you know, in, in a fairly difficult start to 2023, I would love for you know everyone to be able to use tools that have been the foundation, the bedrock of my entire trading. And, and that's a great place to start. I'll see you in the next update. Hey traders, Raggy from Simpler Trading. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to leave a like and a comment below. And remember, subscribe and click the bell icon so you'll get notified of the next update. And when you're ready to join me for live trading, be sure to head on over to simplertrading.com. I'll see you in the next update.